My name's Malin, and in this video, I want to talk about childhood parenting and trauma. So I work a lot in a cafe and I've seen a lot of parents come in and I've seen how they react with kids. I've seen how kids kind of grow up. Of course, I've had my own experience growing up as a kid. And especially nowadays, um, people are really focused on the short term benefit rather than the long term gain, you know. They'd rather see their kids' eyes light up to see like a marshmallow or have like, you know, their little baby china or hot chocolate or whatever, rather than instilling in them a discipline and having things that will actually benefit them in the long run, benefit their health, rather than having their eyes light up like a heroin or crack addict. And you may think that what I'm saying is quite harsh, but think about the consequences in the future, like how they are going to grow up and how they're gonna react with each other. And especially in the world that we live in today, you know, they're either just gonna get sucked into this kind of void of video games, online porn, and who knows where this is gonna freaking lead, like with AI robots and like all this shit, you know, things could turn really bad in the future. And this is like a terrible thing, especially for the generation below me, because they've all grown up kind of in this kind of pleasure indulgence phase and then they've had this COVID kind of thing, so they don't really want to go to school. And kids and teachers these days, you know, they can't enforce rules on the kids because the kids just basically get whatever they want and they're kind of the ones that are ruling it. And this is the problem with the world at the moment is that we're all so focused on trying to treat everyone equally and trying to, you know, have everyone feel good and all that sort of stuff. Where you know, this is all shallow. It's very, it's so freaking shallow and it just really pisses me off to see all these people passing thinking that they're, they're happy that their kids are lighting up and they're excited, but they're not actually loving them because they, they're in love with the marshmallow. They're in love with the sugar high. They're not actually in love with you. They're not in love with life. They're not experiencing life. They're like shying away from it and not getting to learn and like experience life and try and interact with other people, which can be very difficult. And, you know, this is, this is the problems that I've seen with parenting and kids at the moment. And, you know, like they just can, kids these days can just throw tantrums and that kind of get whatever they want quite often. This is just what I've seen from my experience, but there has been one couple that I was so shocked to see. And she said that, she's really tried to instill with her kids that whether they do something wrong or they do something right, they don't punish them. They just, they just want their kids to be honest. And I, that hit me because that is unconditional love. And that is the best love that you can give a child because you're not imposing rules on them. You're not imposing anything on them. You're like, you're fine as you are. If you fuck up, we're here for you. You know, if you stumble on your feet, we're here for you. You can talk about it. And that doesn't create this big wave of like guilt and shame, like, oh my God, I have to do these things for my parents, which is kind of what I grew up in because my upbringing was very kind of strict and rigid. And it just led me to kind of always look to other people and try and please them and keep my emotions and my, everything that I was feeling down so that I could, you know, be acceptable and try and fit in. And that created all the shame and guilt for all these things that I've done and kind of instilled in me that, you know, like, my worth as a person is only worthy if I am doing things for other people, if I'm trying to make them happy and kind of at my own expense. And I was always kind of like subconsciously just looking from the side of my eyes to see if anything was like, you know, if I was doing anything right or anything like that. And when opportunities came my way for me to do something for myself or something that I really wanted, I couldn't handle the emotional burden on it. So I just had to cut myself off from it because that's all I'd known, you know, there was so much shame and guilt built up that it just instilled in me this low self-esteem and just all these bad and negative thoughts that, you know, I couldn't let anyone close. I couldn't let anyone see that part of me. So I just cut everything off and just hid and retreated into myself because that was the only place where I could get solace because there was so much shame and guilt that I was carrying around. And it's taken me so many years to get through it and to, you know, and it still comes up now. Like, I still have that little scared boy inside of me now. And, you know, people like to think, oh, I've changed, you know, I'm different now. I'm bigger and I'm stronger and I know all these things better. But, like, that little kid in you is still kind of in there, you know, whether you want to or not. And 
you kind of have to deal with that and you have to accept that and you have to try and treat that little kid with respect and love because maybe as a kid it didn't get the love that it wanted that it deserved and it feels like it still needs to be a certain way to be loved and to be worthy and it doesn't <laughs> it doesn't have to be that way like for example you know sometimes especially at work sometimes I'll have people just correct me and a part of me really gets rigid about that I it, it just attacks something deep in me and this little boy just comes out and he's like so scared and afraid and he's like oh shit I've been doing something wrong you know like but the adult part of me is kind of like, I know how to do this. I know how this works. Stop doing that. You know, it kind of like slaps it away. But like these feelings are coming up and I can't just keep pushing them down from the shame and guilt because, you know, that's just natural. These things come, they go and they're coming for a reason. And I have to, it's important to accept that and to understand it more because that is a part of you coming up, you know, and you can't deny that. You can't deny these things that are underlying and... You know, all these things in our childhood, which is why I was kind of going on a rant about parenting, they affect us as adults and as we grow into teenagers. And these can really fuck us up and, you know, get us caught in these kind of cycles. You know, as we get used to habits and these ingrained ways of living, we can kind of get stuck in kind of the same kind of thing, completing the same patterns over and over. And that's like no way to live. And, you know, there's there's a lot more to life. Life can be really beautiful. You know, sometimes it, it does give you trials and tribulations and it does teach you, you know, that you have to be kind of greedy and you have to hold your own ground. But, you know, there, there's a deeper satisfaction to life that you can kind of tap in if you're, if you're willing to look for it, if you can find it. And it's hard to kind of see, but, you know, it's just, it's just in the day to day, you know, what I've been trying to do is just not judging the things that I want or the things that I want to do, whether because before I used to label things as bad and shameful and guilty. And that was coming from my childhood. You know, you have to be a certain way. You have to do things a certain way. You have to do your chores before you do anything else. And you can't have any electronics at this time. And you have to go to bed at this time and you have to eat all your food, no matter if you like it or not. And all these things just kind of got in the way and they've just created these patterns like, oh, if I don't do the right thing, then I'm a shameful and guilty, terrible kind of person. And it kind of put this pressure on me that I'm only worthy if I do these kind of certain things, which is, that's no way to live because if your worth is conditional, it's put on external sources, then I can't control it. You know, nobody can control that if it's put outside of you. But if you have something inside of you and you're like, okay, so I have these feelings, I have these things that come up, I have these beliefs and kind of things all inside of me, you know, how do I want to act today? And just trying to do that as best as I can. And as I was saying with, with my day-to-day -day life, I haven't been trying to judge myself too harshly and just being allowing things to kind of happen a bit more rather than you have to work out this much, you have to do this much soccer training, you have to do this because then it reaches to that. It's just kind of each day I'm kind of exploring things, you know, I'm like, oh, well, I actually enjoy just going out for a kick of soccer just by myself or with a friend. And after that, you know, I kind of feel better. And then I can come back home and I could come back and watch, watch a show or something and I can feel okay about it. And sometimes I don't cook as much as I'd like to or cook the meals that I think I should be eating. But you know, it's just one problem at a time, one step at a time and kind of building this deeper fulfillment and contentment that you get if you're just aware of yourself and your life and you can see that these things actually, you know, have benefit for you and you can kind of find these things that scratch your itch. Like for me, I just love reading fiction books. I love just getting lost in, in a story and seeing what, uh, what the characters will do, where the story will go, you know, and seeing myself in that story and like, oh my God, like this person got through that thing like this. And, you know, <laughs> this is how their relationship kind of worked out. And I love when there's just random beat bits and pieces of just deep philosophy and you're like, wow, this is kind of like amazing. It's nice to get lost in this story. 
But anyway, that's what I wanted to talk about with childhood, the effects that it has on you parenting in a kind of social and modern era and what some of the consequences of that may be, what some of the consequences of that have been for me. And, you know, this idea, like I said, this one parent that I really looked up to and admired that I'm going to take her tip for with kids, you know, having having them freely come up to you and say, oh, I did this thing that is bad. And, you know, just them admitting it to you and you're saying, okay, well, I'm not really proud of you, but, well, not that I'm not proud of you, but it's like, oh, that's okay, you know, like you've stuffed up. We do that sometimes, we're human. And I think that's very important going forward, you know, so that, as I said, you don't have shame or guilt, but also to think of long-term compassion rather than, you know, these short-term addictions that are just going to lead people down really deep and dark holes, you know, whether that's just you know, a lot of sex and having just lots of different partners and no real commitment, no depth to their life. And I just feel sorry for these kids that are going to be living really shallow and bad lives, you know, like living on the surface level, chasing these quick highs and whatever feels good, rather than these things that, you know, don't always feel good, but then they have benefits and they build confidence and a deep sense of fulfillment and just... Like, it's amazing how much prouder I can be of myself just from going through these things and experiencing more of life. Anyway, thank you for listening to my rant, and I'll see you in the next video.